storytime summer reading. I, of course, am Miss Hannah, and if you guys remember Crunch, he's back with me because it is, what is it? Crunch Shark Week! That's right, Crunch. So, we're going to read about your favorite person in the world. I know you love me, but it's about another person that really loves sharks. Miss Eugenie Clark, the shark lady. Isn't that right, Crunch? Did she really love sharks? I know. Should we read all about her? This is Shark Lady, a story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. And it's by Jess Keating. Now, Miss Hannah will warn you ahead of time. Miss Hannah loves science. And this book is about a famous scientist. So Miss Hannah might sprinkle in some fancy words. You think you can handle that? You want to learn some with me? Yes, let's do it. Okay. This is about Miss Eugenie Clark. Let's see if you know any of these sharks. It was Saturday and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp salty air. Can you smell it? and stare at the glittering rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Eugenie, Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with the sharks, to breathe underwater with gills of her own? Can you show me your gills? What do you think the bottom of the sea feels like? Is it squishy and soft? What do you think? Maybe. When summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach at Atlantic City. Sticky stuff gum her ears to keep the sticky stuff gum in her ears to keep the water out. Eugenie dove down, down, down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars. You see sea stars? Speckled on the pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean cord. Silvery fin. Who has a silvery fin on their back? A shark does. Dolphins do too, you're right. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew that they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But sharks were, the, but sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove. This time into, what's she doing? She's reading into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queens, Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Isn't that cool? Eugenie, Eugenie's notebooks were filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams on the margins of her pages. She likes sharks. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15-gallon tank was much too small for a shark, but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies and, you know what that one is? A clownfish and a coral red snake. This is a saltwater tank. We have two different types of tanks that we mostly keep, saltwater and freshwater. This is a saltwater tank. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. What do you think this one is? It looked kind of like an angelfish to me. Maybe she has an angelfish in her aquarium. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie, to what to do. Forget those sharks. Be a secretary. Be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of the pressures thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans, and they said sharks were mindless monsters. But Eugenie knew better. Her dream was, to, was as big as a whale jar. So, so again, Eugenie dove. It is perfectly okay for girls and boys to be scientists. I'm a scientist and I studied zoology. It was one of my favorite things. She plunged into every course as she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, 
how they behaved and how they were put together, both inside and out. Despite all the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. She got her degree in zoology, which means the study of animals. She studies specifically, here's a big word for you, ready? Ichthyology, there we go, ichthyology, which means the study of fish. Can you say it for me? Ichthyology? It's a hard one. You guys did great, though. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had never been discovered before. It's the Red Sea sand diver, Trichinosis naki, the Bard zinni pipefish, or the Sicken... Sicken Ithix Benetuvii and Volcano trip, Triple Fin. Hello, Girl Grandma Volcana. Those are the scientific names, the second ones. And, so, and they're Latin, so sometimes it's hard to say. On a research mission exploring the Palm Islands, Eugenie was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She was in the fright. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. What kind of shark do you think it is? Maybe. And on Aya Mujeres, she dispelled the myth that sharks must always keep moving to stay alive when she swam, swam through dark caves, silent and still, full of resting sharks. We used to think that because sharks didn't have a special organ that fish do, that they had to keep moving or else they would, they would die. But... Eugenie discovered that was not true. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven that she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. Are you smart and brave? Sure you are. It may not be about sharks, but you are smart and brave about something. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more. She never, but she never forgot the people who still believed that sharks were mindless ant killers. Because of their scary reputation, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean, and she was determined to prove everyone wrong. Look how big the shark mouth is. Has is your mouth that big? Do you have that many teeth? Sharks have 3,000 teeth. How many do you have? 32, did you know that? So much more than me. But they're, look at all the stuff they're hunting. Is it good to hunt our animals that much? No. We don't want to hunt any animals to be so they're endangered. Eugenie fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much stronger than anyone knew? She has a shark that she's training. They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks. And, and even they learned that they can remember their training for at least two months after. That's a pretty long time. So she was able to train a shark to push a button. That's pretty good. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream, and Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. Look at all the different types of animals there. And there's our shark. Okay, here are a few little little things. Oh, what should we hit for fun fact? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Some sharks give birth to babies. Most fish lay eggs. Some sharks actually have babies live. They're put, they're in sacks called mermaid purses. Isn't that interesting? Sharks are one of the oldest animals around. 
And this is Eugenie Clark's time when this is when this is when she was born and made fourth, nineteen twenty two. She earned her zoology degree here and her masters. And she studied fish in the Red Sea, that's in Israel. And then she discovered some fish in 1959. She started writing books about her findings. So this is all her life right here. Isn't that fascinating? All right. Crunch would like you to remember that fish are friends, not food. And do not forget to put this book on your reading list. And we have one more week of summer reading. And then it's time to swim with, no, not really swim with the sharks, but swim in, our, in the pool for our pool party. And we'll see you soon. Can you say goodbye, Crunch? Fish or friends, not food. Goodbye. <laughs>